Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to have you all uh, with us. Uh, today, we will have the seventh, uh, the seventh uh, seminar of this semester. And this seminar will be uh, presented by João Victor Melamara, who is a student in the graduate program. So I would like to thank you, João, very much for accepting uh, the, our, our invitation. Uh, João uh, has his uh, a bachelor degree from the University of Espírito Santo uh, in San Mateus campus uh, as a chemical engineer. And he also received his master's degree from the University of Campinas, who, uh, where, where he was uh, conducting research on the computational modeling of microfluidics. More particularly, he were focused on the development of a SCFD code to predict the flow pattern in micro devices. He's currently a PhD student at the same university, and uh, he's uh, carrying on with his uh, research on computational fluid dynamics. So, without any further ado, I would like to, to uh, thank you again for accepting uh, our invitation. And uh, it's, it's very nice to have you on board. Uh, thank you. It's up to you now, João. Okay, Professor, thank you for all this uh, introduction about me, myself. And uh, good afternoon to all. This month, this seminar, it's going to be about CFD and microfluid. CFD means computational fluid dynamics. And I represent my research that I did during my, my master's at Unicamp. And this research is, in, is titled Analysis of Side Feeding in Bumpy Microchannel Using, using Computational Fluid Dynamics. But firstly, before I start, start presenting my research, I would like to show how the study of microfluids can be crucial to, for medicine to fight against, for example, the COVID-19, bring back to a, uh, a current scenario. Here we have two pictures showing uh, two ways that it can it can be useful. The first one shows the pressure field in a respiratory tract where it can represent uh, the pressure performance when you are using a, res a mechanical respirator. When we, uh, the, 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 prof the medical professional, they set a specific velocity and this velocity will provide uh, a specific pressure field. So we have uh, estimation uh, of this, this parameter that is it's quite useful when uh, you're working uh, nowadays in when I'm talking about mechanical respirators. As well as we have also the synthesis of some medicines. Here, for example, the vaccine, where you need uh, uh, a high performance of mixing or stirring of some re reagents or substance along the process. So uh, using microfluids here can be an uh, important uh, field to help the production of this type of uh, compounds. However, let's talk about microfluids. First of all, microfluids can be uh, de defined as an area of science that studies the fluid flows in microchannels. These microchannels can, can have diameters uh, from tens to 100 micrometers. And working in, the, in this field can provide better results. We have many advantages. For example, with the use of small quantities of reagents, we have process with uh, separation and the text of materials with high selectivity and high resolution as well. We also uh, lead with process with short residence time in chemical reactions. 
Uh, and there are more uh, advantages when working in this case. However, uh, using duct pipe device with diameters in order of micrometers can result in a low Reynolds number, which induces to a laminar regime flow, where viscous force are higher than inertial force. In this case, when you're talking about uh, a chemical reaction, for example, that we needed to enhance the contact surface between the strings of uh, reagent A and reagent B, we needed to figure out a way to, uh, to make uh, a better interaction between these layers of fluid. So what would be the alternative to increase stirring, mixing along the microchannel? Here we have uh, micromixers as a solution for this, uh, for this question. They can be designed with them to provide a better mixing and steering performance along the device. In some cases, we can get faster residence time. Here we have the three types of micromixers. The first one here is the laminar passive micromixers, where the diffusion is predominant in this case. So we have two inlets here, and along this uh, microchannel, they're gonna be the interaction between the, the strings gonna be uh, prevailed by the diffusion. However, we can induce some chaotic diffusion. So you are talking about the convective passive micromixers, showing this picture here that we can implement, insert some grooves, some bumps, some obstacles, or make this channel curved or use a zigzag direction, zigzag path along the microchannel to induce secondary flows here, increase the chaotic direction. It will make the strings, the, the string lines, uh, get intertwined between themselves and consequently uh, increase uh, the mixing and stirring performance. We have the third case here, the active micromixer, that it is it, that means you use an external source of energy. In this case, we are using here the elect uh, electrical field that is embed in the micro device in order to make to make the the string lines uh, create a secondary flow and again increasing the 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 steering performance along the path here in that case it can make the process more expensive because we are dealing with electric field or in some case, temperature field, pressure field, magnetic field. And you need it in some case to use, uh, when you are working with magnetic field, for example, you needed to do the separation of the string from the, sorry, from the separation of the material right after getting a high performance of mixing or stirring, you need to separate uh, some metallic material that you, they are mixed in the, the streams. So they can be expensive. It can demand more space because of this additional uh, session that is embedded uh, on the micro device. So you have this two type of micro mixers. In this research, uh, I pay more attention to this one, the convective passive micro mixer, where you're gonna analyze better uh, a good, geometry here you're going to make some change along this geometry along this entrance channel here to in order to provide a better stirring performance and in this case the this stir is going to be measured by the vertices vertices so can be uh, it is defined here as the measurement of the rate of rotation of a solid body about its own center of mass while it is moving, it is moving through a flow. There are two main effects here that cause uh, vorticity. The first one is the shear stress, showing this picture here, where the the layer of fluid flowing near the wall they are pulled by the by the viscous effects here. 
So we have a low velocity here. Meanwhile, we have a higher velocity here. And this gradient of velocity makes the particle spin. In this case, spin in a counterclockwise. And here in the lower wall, the particle is spin in a clockwise direction. Meanwhile, we have here in the center line, there is no effects of the, the, the shear stress. So here there is no risk, no vorticity uh, in, in terms of these particles here in this layer. So the second one is called uh, separation effect here. And here we have, for example, in this case, we have the velocity, the increase of the velocity because uh, there is a reduction of the cross-sectional area here. And the pressure drop, the pressure drop is for, it is ne the pressure gradient is negative in this case, and the boundary layer it is like we usually see in the literature. However, when we deal with uh, uh, expansion, we have uh, expansion of the the channel. The velocity you decrease because of you have uh, a larger uh, cross sectional area. And also the pressure here, the pressure gradient will increase. And following this, the, the streamline is going to change the direction in order to make a balance in the system because it flows from the higher, the, the low, the, the higher, higher value to the small value. When you're dealing with this positive gradient of pressure, the streamline tends to change its direction. And here they go to this cavity, for example, make a uh, deformation in the boundary layer here. As you can see, we not we here this boundary uh, layer here not only have the viscous effect, but also we have here the convective one. So talking about CFD simulation, there are four basic components that we need to pay attention when we are dealing with a simulation, CFD simulation here. The first one is the mathematical models that uh, perform our, our case. Uh, we will have four equations implemented here. We are dealing with fluid dynamics along the microchannel, so we needed to use uh, the momentum and the mass conservation here, continuity in my case, Stokes. As well as we have the vertices in the string function equation that are going to be our parameters to analyze the stirring along the channel. So we need to implement them as well uh, in our code. Some assumption was taken into account here: steady state, uh, steady state regime. The fluid is incompressible and Newtonian, and the flow is in two dimensional. So uh, by the simulation being two-dimensional, in this case, momentum is gonna have two components. The velocity is gonna be in U velocity and V velocity in X and Y direction, respectively. For the discretization process, we have here uh, the space, the discretization of the space and the discretization of the equations. For the space, we are using the finite volume method where the nodal points that we're gonna store our value of Vorticity, string function, velocity, pressure, they're going to be stored in this nodal point is centered in each micro volume. As well as the discretization of the equation is going to follow the hybrid difference scheme. That means the combination between central difference scheme and upwind, upwind difference scheme. The central difference is recommended to be used in case where the diffusion take uh, some importance uh, along the process. And upwind, it is when the convective uh, force prevails of the diffusive. And they are dictated by the Peclet number. The solver here was, uh, was fo followed the collocated simple algorithm. When all that previous equations, moment, vorticity, continuity and the uh, string function was linked and solved. 
Uh, the algebraic equation system was solved based, based on the TDMA, TDMA uh, or Thomas algorithm. And finally, the fourth process, the fourth step here in the simulation is the post processing step where we're going to show uh, our results. In this case, we're using the Paraview software, so the Paraview visualization software that's going to show the velocity, pressure, vorticity, and string function fields. We're also going to plot some graphs, uh, taking some slides along the path. For the ver verification step that we needed to do to verify concordance among the code, we are using the open phone software. It is a known software that we can analyze using some uh, known uh, case, case studies, to see this concordance. It is good enough to, to move forward and analyze our contribution, of our novelty related to the micro device. So, talking about the code that I have written, the code was written in uh, Fortran 95 language. The first step was to read an uh, additional file, name it by flow file. This file has uh, values for the refinement degree, where you can set the number of cells in the x direction and the y direction. We also set the number of iterations, the velocity inlet in our boundary condition, the density and viscosity of the fluid. In this case, we are using water. And there are more parameters, for example, on the relaxation factor for the simple algorithm and some others. The second step is another is, the re, is reading the an, another additional file, name it Geon. This file can be easily uh, created on a spreadsheet on Excel, for example. And it is this step is responsible to mesh and validate the grid to see if all the areas are positive, if all points, if there are not ghost points inside the cap, inside the, uh, the device. So you will analyze if everything is set in the right spot. The third step is when we're gonna read the boundary conditions. Here we indicate where the three boundary conditions are set and the user do that. So for example, when where the, the, the walls are set, we're gonna, we're gonna use, in this case, velocity equal to zero, no slip condition, or when the where the inlet is set, we're gonna write, okay, in this position, uh, the value gonna you're gonna have the you're gonna assume this value the v inlet that you're gonna be set by the user in this file previously. And after that, and after reading the boundary condition subroutine in our code, we're gonna run the simple algorithm. And there is a, a huge loop here, doing all the, iter the, the iterations set by the user until you get the convergence. And getting the convergence here for the, velo for the velocity and the pressure in the field, we will solve the vorticity equation that, it is, that needs to have the velocity field. So in this one, we go and solve the, the last equation, in our case, the string function equation. And finally, the last step here is to store all the results that we achieved here in a .vtk file to be visual, to be seen uh, with some graphs and some color figures uh, after for all the analysis. So, verification step. Here we analyze two case studies. The first one is a rectangular duct to analyze the U velocity in a Reynolds number equal to 100, and our results were compared with open form. Here we have a geometry, and uh, we, we took some slides, three slides along this channel. The first one were the, where the fluid was not fully developed, and here we have uh, uh, set it in x equal to one millimeters, and here we have 
uh, sliced in a, in a section where the fluid is fully developed. All the, the lines, all the curves here show good agreement with error in order of 1% in all three scenarios. And the last one here, we, can, we could use analytical solution that we can get from the literature. And again, we show a good uh, performance for the U velocity in this case. Compare open phone, analytical solution, and my code. The second uh, case study was the lead driven cavity. We, here we analyze the velocity vertices in the string functions fields. The velocity I have already analyzed in the previous uh, case. So here we're going to just analyze the vertices in the string function with Reynolds number in three different Reynolds number and again compared with open phone. We do have three walls and there is, there is a, a, a fluid moving on the boundary on the top boundary here. So probably we're gonna uh, see some vertically inside this uh, cavity. Here we have some graphs comparing three different uh, positions, y equal to 0 0.2 millimeters, 0 0.5 and 0 0.8. And, and the three different Reynolds number, Reynolds number equal to 100, 200 and 400. And again, all profiles for the vertically shows good agreement again. And the arrow uh, was in a range from 0 0.3 to 4.5%. And again, we, we saw good agreement uh, related to the vertices as well. And the string function is a parameter that we can measure the, the flow rate in a specific uh, space. For example, we can take the difference between the string function in the string line here and this string line here and uh, make this difference, we can multiply it with the distance and get the volumetric flow. So we can uh, estimate which re region uh, inside the, the device, there are more, flu more, more fluid flow, fluid flowing. And when you increase the Reynolds number, we can see more uh, regions of vortices can be uh, forming along the along the, the the path. For example, here Reynolds equal to 40, 400. We have some large recirculation at the corners of the cavity, and for sure the intensification of the vertices where the the main Vorts is centered here, goes to the center when we are increasing the, the velocity. So here we have our, our case, our, our novel, novelty, this micro device. The idea here is to investigate a lateral feeding here in a conical chamber, this one, as the entrance section and analyze if it leads to a spiral flow due to the increase of the, mo the angular momentum caused by both the reduction of this area and this lateral feed. So here we analyze two different uh, type of geometries for the entrance chamber, the conical one that we are seeing here and the straight one where the D, the capital D is equal to the, this D. And uh, we're gonna analyze also the distance as from the inlet location to the left wall. So for example, in this case, we are uh, using S equal to 300 micrometers, but we can also uh, perform this, this case with S equal to 100, approximately here, and, one at, and when S is equal to zero, when we are assuming our inlet in the left boundary where the D is set. So you're gonna have uh, inlet in this whole, whole left boundary. Also, we're gonna analyze different diameters, D equal to 200 micrometers and 250 micrometers, and also the curvature of the bumps, A. A equal to one, two, and four, and a case with no bumps. 
A is the exponent in these equations, in both equations. The first one equation here is represents the, the, the position of the belt here in the lower wall, meanwhile here for the top wall. And exponent dictates the, the geometry of the bumps. So we will have a sharpest bump here, when A equals to four. And when we have the A equal to one, we have a smoother bump, where this bump is more smoother, it's not sharper that we are seeing here. So the first analysis includes the interest chamber. We are analyzing here the string function field. And uh, we can see here mainly in the in the second, in the third uh, case, we can see some recirculation format here up, upstream the feed as well as downstream the feed. So we have here uh, some recirculation. On the other hand, we don't have here when we are dealing with an inlet here in the left boundary. So by using an uh, inlet here, uh, a lateral feeding, it can provide recirculation inside the, the chamber in both cases. In all, all three different cases here, we also have recirculation inside the cavities right after the insertion of the bumps. So we have recirculation in both cavities in all cases here. We can also quantitatively analyze this take some slides in the three main locations uh, where we can see the sun recirculation. So here in the region upstream the feed, we can analyze here in the first graphic where this profile here that represents the conical one with capital D equal to 600 micrometers. So this case here, the conical one, show the highest values of the string function. And for sure, we can also see a larger uh, extension of this recirculation here. So we have more contact surface in that case. Meanwhile, we have this other two case related to the, the straight one when capital D is only equal to 200 micrometers. And in this case, we have small quantity of string function and uh, a small uh extension of the vortice here when you go to the the vortice downstream the feed we also see again that the conical one where the capital d is equal to 600 shows the highest value of the string function so the flow rate here is going to be higher when compared to the others and when you go to the cavity here we see that the the, in, the the geometry of the entrance entrance chamber does not contribute to this to the string function right after this throw here so you needed to analyze more which parameter is influence here this contribution for the vorticity inside the vortex and string function inside the the cavity Again, we can also analyze the, the location of the field. So now we are setting the conical chamber is the best one. Now we're gonna analyze again the, the location of the field in the, on the left boundary. Here, uh, lateral feeding went as it equal to 100 micrometers. And here when the, 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 the X is equal to 300 micrometers. And again, we see vortices being formed here, downstream, uh, upstream and downstream, and upstream and downstream here. However, the strongest vorticity is set in different position here. This one, we see the strongest vorticity upstream, the inlet, in the case B. Meanwhile, in the case C, we have the strongest vortice here in the downstream, sorry, upstream, the, the inlet. 
So which one is better for our kids? When you are dealing with, uh, for example, uh, uh, chemical reaction, we need to use, we need to make increase the, the interaction between the reagent A, reagent B, and make this contact surface get higher along the process. So this case here, represented in the, the, the or by the letter B, shows that the main flow here that embrace the strong adversity. So in that case, you're gonna be more interaction between the strongest var the strongest recirculation with the main flow. Meanwhile, this one we are just uh, we are the interaction between this strong vertices is not embraced. It's not. It is just near, but not embraced by the the main flow, as we can see in the letter B uh, device. So showing the vertical profile here, we can see that all the three cases show the, the same profile for the vertices, the mean vertices, where the highest contribution comes from the five bumps that are set, that set in our micro device. So you also, again, I needed to assert here that we needed to pay attention and to figure it out which parameter is contributing to this higher value of vorticity. So we can analyze the coverture of the bumps. Here we have our four arrangements. If the letter A, we see no bumps along the microchannel. And here we have the smoother bump here. It's not the sharpest one. The sharpest one is here, A equal to four. We have an intermediate coverture of bumps here. And all of them shows recirculation inside the cavity, right after uh, the throw here. So we have uh, recirculation in this cavity on the upper wall and on the bottom wall in all these three scenarios here. We can analyze it better here in taking this graph where we see that the Coverture is so the smoother coverture of bumps when A is equal to one, show the highest value of vertices, but the difference is slight between them. So we have a slight difference between them, and it is caused by the extensive the extension of the, the throw here. We have a, a, a larger zone with throw here. Where the velocity is higher in this in this section when compared to this one this one is not larger when compared to that so here we have a high value a high grade velocity gradient here and affect it leads to a higher velocity a higher vorticity inside the, this throw and right after that as well so here I am, I am showing you uh, the separation effect that I presented uh, in the introduction section in the seminar, where I took three slides uh, during one cavity. So here we have x equal to 0 0.8, right after the throat, where we see this profile, this pressure profile here, However, inside the cavity here in x equal to one, we have an increase of the pressure. The pressure gets increased here and it influences the change of the direction of the fluid. And when you go, when you go, when and when we go to the second throw, again the pressure decreases and decreases more compared to the increase here. The percentage is higher and decreases more relatively more here and again decrease so we have a constant increase and decrease of the pressure and vorticity and velocity as well and analyzing the vorticity here we have uh, in the same slides we have for the first case in the first throw this scenario here it is right after the cavity oh sorry right after the throw you have this slice here, where the, the maximum vertices is 
mainly contributed by the viscous effects from the walls here. And when you go to the cavity, it's not affected by the walls anymore. It's more affected by the separation effect that I showed previously. And we can, and when we go to the throw again, we see again the the increase of the vorticity caused by the viscous effects that comes from this section with higher velocity gradient here because the reduction of the cross-sectional area. Analyzing also the characteristic diameter of the microchannel, here we have d equal to 200 and here we have d equal to 250. And we can see here this row, the narrowing of the channel is quite higher compared to this one. And consequently, the velocity, the sorry, the vertice and the velocity and the vorticity, they they get enhanced here in that case. As you can see here in this graph, the value here is almost four times higher for the, the narrowed diameter. However, we, after analyzing all these parameters, we needed to pay attention to the pressure drop because we can, for sure, we can increase the Reynolds number. That means increasing the velocity and gets higher uh, values of vorticity and uh, strength function, flow rate, and so forth. But need to pay attention to the pressure drop because we, we sh you cannot provide the best micro device with the highest value of vorticity with a huge value of pressure drop. So here we have some values uh, related to the pressure drop in all arrangements for the conical chamber as the entrance section. And pay attention to the, the Reynolds number equal to 40 here and analyze the pressure drop comparing to the, the two diameters, both diameters here, we see the pressure drop is huge comparing them. This one is almost five times lower compared to this one in all curvatures. And also uh, comparing the, uh, the three different curvatures here, this one is approximately 15% lower compared to the curvature A equal to one. So based on that and based on the vertices shown previously in all scenarios, we conclude, ah, I need to, to show uh, as well here, the location of the field here, where we're talking about the, the value of S, that the pressure drop is close enough between them. So there is no significant difference here when we are talking about the lateral feeding, comparing all, all these two cases here. So, based on that, uh, we can conclude that this one, this coverture, coverture A equal to two, even though we have here uh, a slight low, uh, a slight value of vertice compared to the A equal to one, the pressure drop here is, is lower, is considered lower compared to the, the other covert curvature. So this curvature is gonna be uh, the best one. In that case, analyze the pressure drop in the vorticity. Also analyze the, the, the diameter we have here, times uh, five times higher the pressure drop for that case with D equal to 200. Meanwhile, our vorticity is approximately four times higher. So the preference comes from the, diam the larger diameter, in that case, 250. And uh, as I presented pre previously, the, the location of the field is gonna be the 100 because we can embrace the, the, the strongest vorticity uh, with the, the main flow. So some conclusions can be taken here. Uh, the conical entrance chamber induce an intensification in the local vortex by increasing the vorticity. As you could see, we can generate some vorticity uh, upstream and downstream, the inlet by using a uh, lateral feeding and the reduction of the cross-sectional area in the conical one 
can increase the, the vortex mainly downstream the feed. The increment of bumps creates a throw region where the fluid drastically increases the, the velocity and consequently the vorticity. Like uh, I presented, that, that thin uh, path that the fluid needs to cross needed to get higher velocity and consequently the higher a higher gradient, uh, a higher ve velocity gradient, you influence, you contribute to a high, higher vertice in that uh, zone. And after passing through the bumps, through the, the throat, the, the fluid recirculates inside the cavity due to the change in the pressure gradient. What we, so, uh, we talked about the separation effect caused, the positive, caused by the positive pressure gradient. And the different curvatures of bumps result in slight changes in the vertice. On the other hand, here we have a significant pressure drop when you're comparing uh, our three case of curvature. Talking about the diameter, the narrowing of the channels, D equal to 200, favors the increase of velocity of fluid of the fluid elements, resulting in the intensification of the vertice. Nevertheless, the pressure drop increases highly as the velocity also increases, and when you have uh, bumps along the channel. On the other hand, the feeding location does not affect the pressure drop. The difference, the, the different uh, feeding location does not show some uh, aspects regarding the, the pressure drop. The results so provide uh, evidence that curvature equal to two, the intermediate curvature where the feed location equal to 100 micrometers from the, the left boundary and the diameter equal to 250 micrometers operate in, in a Reynolds number equal to 40 lead to a good design option for the micro device considered. Finally, the code has become a tool to assist in the study of fluid dynamics in case of milli and micro scale. It can be used for future research with other new geometries as well as it can be also, it can also help the teaching in the, in the teaching of fluid mechanics in classroom. But future works, we can also to to work in the implementation of the mass transport equation to assess the mix index in case such as micromixers. This step here, this work here, uh, has been has has been doing by a student uh, in our lab. Uh, currently, uh, we are in the verification step for this case, so we are already working on this code in, in some ways to make it more developed and uh, helpful for our, some scenarios, like when you're talking about the chemical reaction inside um, micromixers. Another point here, we can add uh, a third dimension in the mass generation. And also we can uh, propose an optimization equation on a response surface in terms of vorticity, a Reynolds number, pressure drop. If we had the implementation of this equation, we can also use the mixing index to, to analyze the best arrangement, the best geometry that we can provide a better mixing, a better stirring uh, in the end of the micro, uh, the micro device. So, I'd like to say thank you to the CNPK for the, all the financial support uh, during my master's. Uh, also, a uh, thank for the School of the Chemical Engineering at Unicamp. And last but not least, the lab that I, I have worked at during my master's and I am working for my PhD uh, currently. Uh, it is the Larissa lab. So thank you to everyone that who is watching here my, my seminar. Thank you very much, João, for putting together this presentation. It was very interesting. And there's a couple of things here that people were 
are very interested. So the, the first question, uh, we, we can see, we can see that your that the results that you have presented in terms of the computational modeling and the simulation is a compromise. At the end of the day, it was a compromise between the the pressure drop and the mixing, which in that particular case represented by the vorticity. So you have shown that at some particular operational conditions and design that you may enhance the vorticity, but on the other hand, you end up with a, a larger uh, pressure drop which means that you need somehow to provide some work to the system via pumps or stuff like that. On the other hand, if you reduce the pressure drop, then you also reduce uh, the vorticity, which is something that's not uh, interesting. So the, the, question, the question that comes here, the very first one is, what if rather than you have the uh, horizontal flow, if you... Uh, if you turn by 90 degrees, then you, you you leave to the gravity to do the work. So you don't need a pump. So in that case, you can you can go and go to smaller diameters, which seems to be speeding up the flow um, since the vorticity is the curve of the velocity field. It turns out that you will enhance the vorticity. So the gentleman here is asking, what if rather than have a pump, if you just turn it and and let the flow go uh, be pushed by the gravity uh, he's asking if you have considered that option yeah we haven't uh, uh, considered this, this option but it's a, a good point but we, we we haven't but yeah the, the code does not take account because it is a, a horizontal flow and in that case uh the the gravitational force does not contribute a lot because you're doing you are dealing with a, a micro device but with changing uh, in that way yeah yeah it can show good i think yeah you can see good results come from that I see. Uh, the, the second question that we have here concerns your mesh. So actually we have three questions in one question. So the very first sub question, if I may say, is uh, someone is asking you whether you have evaluated your mesh. So that's one question. Have you evaluated your mesh? And then the second one, and if you have, which methodology have you used? And then the third question, the third sub question would be how much time, I mean, probably how long does it take to run each simulation? So three questions. Have you performed any mesh sensitivity? If so, what was the methodology? And on top of that, for any particular computational simulation, how long does it take? Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, I have done the, the the mesh test, the mesh deep dent test uh, for all arrangements. So when I change it, the conical entrance or the curvature of the bumps or the diameter, uh, I did the the mesh test, uh, and I, I used methodology that provided by a journal. A CFD journal, I think, was the Journal of Fluids Engineering. Uh, the methodology was the, the name, it was uh, GCI Fine, that means uh, Fine Grid Convergence Index. So I used this one to analyze it, uh, the mesh test. And uh, I took three uh, different mesh for each case and, uh, uh, and analyzed that. And the third question was about, uh, could you the remind time, me? How long does it take to run a yeah. case? Depends on the, 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 the case study that uh, we are working. Uh, for example, the cavity case uh, usually takes uh, five minutes to get the, the convergence. 
Meanwhile, the, the bumpy microchannel takes some hours to get, for example, uh, four hours, five hours, depends on the Reynolds number as well. We, have, uh, we work with a uh, Reynolds number equal, equal to 100, we get value or we get, we needed to take more time to get the convergence solution. In this case, I think seven hours, but the, the, the longest time that I took doing this simulation, I think it was eight hours, one simulation, but I can run four simulations uh, in parallel uh, and it works well. And because of that, uh, doing this parallel uh, uh, system of running, uh, it can affect the time as well. So the the processing of these equations. Uh, but when I analyze just one simulation, probably I would take a short time. I think I would say the maximum would be six hours if I were just running one simulation. When I'm running four in parallel, it takes eight uh, hours. Uh, yeah, what's that? Um, thank you. Uh, the, the, the other question goes that goes like that. You, you were working on uh, micro micro scale, so at the end of the day, using equations based on the continual hypothesis, such as Navier-Stokes. So, as we we all know, one of one of the assumptions to develop the governing equation in fluid mechanics. When we work, uh, on, uh, is the continuum uh, hypothesis so that's that's what it is. So, have you made some analysis considering that? So, uh, I, I'm just trying to give you a hand on this. Um, mm -hmm. My guess, my take on this is that since you go to things which are so tiny, so small, and as we know that the matter is discrete, I'm just assuming that the lady or the gentleman here is interested whether, to, uh, whether the assumption of the continual hypothesis is valid for this scale, uh, this is flow scale. So that, that, okay. that's my take on this question. Okay, yeah. Uh, this equation of Stokes, uh, they are, they, they perform so well, macro scale, but when it comes from uh, a micro scale, we need to pay more attention. We have some methods here, like uh, the Lex Boltzmann methodology that we, we can, you could also apply. Uh, but uh, I analyzed it. Uh, I did some research about that. Uh, this uh, micro device that applied with, my, with diameter uh, in order from uh, tens to hundred, in this case, 200 micrometers, 250 micrometers, uh, could perform so well, the, the molecule that I am working in this case is water. Uh, the length of water, I think, uh, is uh, in the order of minus 10 uh, meters, the length of the water molecule. Uh, some research uh, analyzed experimentally and numerically synthesis of biodiesel. biodiesel. It is a, a long molecule and uh, use it, um, micromixers with this uh, range of uh, diameters. And they show good agreement between the experimental and numerical uh, approach using uh, these equations. So based on that, based on the literature and what some uh, articles that I have read, uh, I conclude that I could use water if there is a small molecule uh, in this micro device with diameter equal to uh, 200 micrometers, and it could not, it should not uh, affect. Uh, and we don't need it to include the collision effect and uh, all of the energy contribution uh, because of that. So yeah, I took some, uh, uh, paid some I paid some attention on that. And uh, I think uh, in the case that I, I am analyzing, it would not contribute a lot uh, based on what I, I read on the literature. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you were still way out the size of the, the mean free path, 
right? So yeah. the flow scale here is two orders of magnitude higher than the mean free path, which means that the continuum hypothesis is still valid. So you should be okay with that. Obviously, if you go to smaller scales, then you need to consider a different approach. Yeah, that, that would be very well. The third question, I mean, the fourth or maybe the fifth question goes like this. Do you have plans to test these micro mixers in real life? More precisely, what strategies you could use to help visualize the vortices? So at the end of the day, maybe someone is asking you whether you have plans to manufacture this uh, micro mixer. Although, just to make clear, it seems to me at the moment what we've just seen is not a micro mixer. There's no mixing. There's more a micro device. It seems that John was just trying to understand the fluid mechanics at the moment rather than the mixing itself. But I see where, where the, the question is coming from. And the thing is, do you have plans to, to manufacture this micro device? And if so, how could you possibly uh, visualize the vortices? Yeah, uh, the idea here is to develop more this code. As, as like I said, there is a student working on this, uh, the implementation of the mass transport equation that you can uh, calculate, measure the mixer index and doing that, we can, we can get some values and not vorticity to analyze the how the, in this case, the mixing performance uh, would change along the path. So before uh, doing, uh, fabric, before projecting, fabricating uh, uh, this device, uh, we would analyze the mass transform the mass transport equation and get the mixing index along the channel. And after that, uh, uh, I think it is interesting to go to the to do some experiments to analyze it. And also we could use you uh, can, can perform this simulation in a I don't know console or ANSYS software, computational software to to validate more the all this date all the results that we we got from from this analysis so yes i think it's interesting to to do that but before we needed to uh, calculate the the mixing index and but i think we are not uh so it, it does not we won't take so long because we have already implemented the mass transport in, a, in another research here uh, in the lab that I work. So I think it is going to be a quick result at the road we're going to have uh, related to that. So uh, I think that's it, the question, the, the, my answer. Yeah, uh, maybe maybe I should add something that uh, I think John is more interested in on the theory, on the theoretical part of the of the research, and he's he's been collaborating with uh, Professor uh, Lucimara's team, and they are more focused on the experimental data, so we can always rely on their experimental data to compare with the numerical findings uh, uh, based on CFD modeling. So as far as I can tell, they, they can get the images from the manufacturer micro device and use the if I'm not mistaken, uh, J images, I think is the name of the code where they can post process the experimental data and then can 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 be used to compare with the uh, CFD. So uh, essentially, uh, John's trying to see what are the advantages of using the computational modeling to optimize the design and then provide guidelines that and then someone else can can use those dimensions and arrangements to design to manufacture a particular micro micro mixer or micro device or micro reactor or whatever it is and then can be used with the um, uh, images from microscope that can be post processed to use a j image to, to use as uh, a benchmarking uh, uh, with that uh, probably uh, there's no more questions in here and i would like to thank you again john for putting this together, it was very interesting. Also, 
for all the other uh, researchers that are following us on the YouTube from, from the graduate program of the School of Chemical Engineering, I, I, I once again would like to invite you all to get in touch with us and put together a presentation. As you can see, Juan did very well. Uh, last year, uh, Tasia was the other one, and Daniel was one of the gentlemen as well that presented here, and you can easily see that this is not rocket science. But anyone can put together a presentation, and it's a very good opportunity to enhance and to practice your English. That will probably pave the way ahead when you go into a particular uh, congress or conference. So uh, I, I, I strongly recommend you to, to take the most of this opportunity. Uh, it's not a big deal. Yeah, and obviously, uh, you can make the most of it. Uh, again, João, uh, from, from us here, thank you very, very much for putting this together. Very interesting pr presentation. Maybe uh, I'm a little bit suspicious to say something, but you've been very brave on taking this challenge and develop your own CFD code while you could use any commercial tool to perform exactly the same analysis, but you decide to go one step higher, which is uh, very well appreciated. That was terrific. Very, very good stuff. Uh, 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 next next month we, we will have the the last uh, seminar of this semester. So for all those people out there would like to see someone here, just dropping us a line, then we can try to get in touch and see what, who can turn up and 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 and, and uh, uh, gives the pleasure to to, to see what they they the, the are performing. But obviously we would also like to have some of the students here, some of the researchers in our program. It doesn't really matter whether you are a master degree or you pursuing your PhD degree. That would be lovely to have you all here. And with that, probably we will, I will end up. And thank you very much, João. Thank you all the people in the backstage. I, I always forget to say that, Maria Fernanda, you've been absolutely terrific, giving very good support with all this broadcasting and you know, all this YouTube stuff. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for, for this. I know that um, um, Rodrigo has been very helpful as well, exchanging a lot of information with uh, Maria Fernanda. So we, you guys are doing an amazing job on the backstage. I cannot forget to mention Daniel, who is the one who, who looks after the, all the questions that comes up from the YouTube, also in the backstage. Thank you very much. This is your work at the end of the day. And without your support, that would never be possible. Um, uh, I really appreciate that. This is really good stuff. I think you, you guys are really help us to put this together and to make this reality. So thank you. And John, you've been terrific. Thank you very much. I see you guys on next month on the eighth series, uh, in the eighth seminars of the uh, series of the graduate seminar. Thank you. Bye for now.